good afternoon, members of the media. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We're going to have a press conference with Superintendent Nicholas Pedro from the Serious Crimes Unit. Crime Division. Crime Division, sorry. And the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Stephen Corbishley, to give us some updates and to provide some reassurance to the community in light of the several firearms incidents we had within the last 24 hours. Thank you and good afternoon. As you are aware, we can confirm that we responded to four separate firearms incidents yesterday. The first incident was brought to our attention at about 9.30 yesterday morning by a 60-year-old female who lived on, lives on Morgan's Road in Warwick. She lives at the residence with her 20-year-old son. She reported that at about 1 o'clock in the morning they heard a noise, which um, at the time was not uh, immediately concerning to them. They subsequently uh, discovered that uh, a firearm had been discharged into the house. We have confirmed this through forensic examination of the scene. The second incident occurred at about 2.30 yesterday afternoon, which has already been widely reported on also. A 26-year-old male was shot several times as he walked along North Shore Road in Devonshire near the Empire Grocery. He has been treated for his wounds uh, through surgical procedures and uh, is recovering in the hospital. The third and fourth incidents occurred in the Khyber Heights Jones Village area of Warwick last night at about uh, quarter to seven. Officers attended Scotts Lane South uh, and uh, were confronted with a scene that had a resident discharge about five rounds through the kitchen door of the residence. Two brothers aged uh, 25 and 21 were at the residence, believed to be in the company of other men at the time when, when that shooting occurred. Whilst officers were investigating this scene, they became aware of another incident that happened nearby where a firearm was discharged on about one occasion at a gentleman who was able to escape the shooters. All of the scenes have been forensically processed and examined and detectives are actively pursuing lines of inquiry from each of these. It's too early to say whether or not these incidents are linked, but obviously we're looking at all the possibilities as it relates to each of them and uh, trying to bottom out whether or not they are indeed connected. Uh, we have a full gamut of resources looking at these issues, and as I indicated to you last week in the wake of the robbery at the Gold Standard premises in Washington Mall, we have a full press of officers available to respond and address these types of incidents and indeed we had officers on each of these scenes very quickly um, in, in uh, response to the calls that we received. I know the Commission is going to speak about uh, some of the, the, those uh, response and uh, bigger issues. Each of these cases is being investigated by the Serious Crime Unit. Detective Inspector Kenton Trott is leading these up with a, with a full gamut of detectives to support him. I would encourage anybody that has any information about any of these incidents to please come forward and contact the detectives. Uh, it's vitally important that we have the support of the community in getting information about who may be committing these crimes so that we can prevent further attacks. With that, um, I'll hand it to the Commissioner for his remarks and we can take some questions afterwards. Uh, good morning. I, I don't stand here to undermine the seriousness of what's taken place in the last 24 hours, um, nor do I forget that we left 2019 with no homicides and we've had extremely serious incidents where the loss of life was uh, a very realistic uh, scenario. Um, I think the key points that I want to get across are that the BPS are now robustly and actively investigating these matters uh, and we have a significant number of investigative resources that are looking into what's taken place at the scenes uh, and also look at other intelligence that we've had as to who's responsible. It's also important that we reassure the local community um, both by being visible uh, on the streets but also to engage with local people to both reassure them and also hear from them any information that they have. Uh, and that's absolutely key. Um, the situation we were in in 2019 um, was not a miss of any instance such as this. The, the support that we got from the community, the information that was provided, allow us to intervene. 
uh, and remove firearms from our streets uh, and also deal with those that were presenting that risk to others through serious violence and we need that help again. I urge that help to come to us again. Uh, and whilst these incidents are contained within a 24 hour period, it concerns me greatly that we don't have other retaliatory incidents that take place as we go forward. Uh, it's absolutely vital that um, we have the support of the community as said, uh, and that can be done either through di direct contact to the Bermuda Police Service, or it can actually be done through the government's anti-gang team through people like Pastor Bean. It can also be done anonymously through Crime Stoppers, and I'll invite Mr Moreno at the end just to remind you uh, of that number. Um, we will continue to give updates to the local community through the media as to how we progress the investigation. And um, some people may say, well, of course I'll say this, but I am confident that we'll bring those to justice because that's the job we do and we are successful at it. But I don't want to be in this situation. I want to be in a situation where such incidents don't take place and we prevent them. And one of the ways that we can do that is actually by removing firearms from the streets of Bermuda. I'm often asked how many firearms there are here, and I don't think there's many, but one is too many. So if anybody has any information, not just in regards to who the offenders are, but where firearms are kept, where ammunition is kept, we want to know that information, because taking one gun or one bullet off the streets saves one life. In fact, it saves more. So again, I urge that information as well. Uh, I'm happy alongside Superintendent Pedro to take any questions. Good morning, uh, Commissioner and uh, Mr. Pedro. Uh, you mentioned just briefly there, uh, can you confirm uh, what sort of firearm was used in any of those four incidents? We, we, don't, we don't comment on specific investigations. Um, obviously, we've recovered evidence from the scene that confirms that a firearm was used, but um, those, are in, those are the types of details we traditionally hold back in these types of inquiries. And how many firearms uh, are police aware that are circulating in the streets? Well, I think, I think as said, um, it, it, it's, it's often an educated guess. And if I was put in a corner, I think it's single figures. And the reason why I think that is through the intelligence that we have and the number of fire in, firearms incidents we take place. And also firearms that we've recovered in the past, notably three in the last year. That was connected to other incidents. So one firearm can be used in many other crimes. So I, I don't want the public to panic and think that there's been this sudden influx of firearms into Bermuda. But equally, as I've said, one firearm is too many. Do, do police uh, believe that this is a continuation of the high level of um, firearms incidents that happened uh, towards the latter part of last year and early this uh, last month? Yeah, we don't believe that's connected. Uh, we think it's contained and of course as the investigation progresses and there are things that Mr Pedro unfortunately can't reveal at the moment, um, we're trying to get to the bottom of why this has taken place because if we know why it's taking place then we can intervene in regards to the relevant parties, potential people that are at risk and go forward but we don't believe it's connected to what took place in the latter part of 2019. The majority of those incidents are involving um, homes, people's residents, and neighborhoods. What message do you have for, uh, for, for you know, good ordinary citizens who are concerned about this? Well, one of the things I mentioned earlier is we are putting uh, uniform patrols in those areas uh, to reassure and actually get messages across. And whilst these incidents are, are extremely serious, we've got to look at the relevance of each location and why they were targeted. And it is my belief that this wasn't a random attack. This wasn't to suggest that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda are at risk, because obviously um, we've looked at four incidents that have taken place in rapid succession that we believe are all connected. That's not to undermine people's worry. And of course, if they are worried, they can speak to their local parish constable and they can get in touch with the police. And of course, we're putting resources in those areas to reassure them. And equally, the government's anti-gang team will be working hard as well to offer that reassurance. Okay. Mr. Commissioner, I'm going to bring attention to uh, the first incident yesterday. Um, can you confirm or deny that 
bullet uh, came within inches from the woman that was laying in her bed, one, and two, the incident last night was retaliation because of that? Uh, I think probably, we're not going to go into those details. Um, it's a legitimate question, um, but those kind of inquiries come through evidence and examination of the scene, interviews with witnesses, uh, and we're not even 24 hours into the investigation, so it's too early to make any comment. And we won't make any comment because part of those, those facts are important and we actually interview relevant suspects. Can you confirm this gang related between uh, Audra and Jones' village, those guys from GBC? Well, I mean, the, the issue around gang is often put forward to as it is it a, a fallout and friction between two gangs. I think that sometimes, and I'm not dismissing your comment, is an easy thing to say. Um, we've got to understand what the motivation is for this, what the fallout is for it, because it actually gives us opportunity to try and resolve, disrupt and prevent, and that's part of our inquiries at the moment. So you will be uh, having a higher level of, of uh, police officers in these areas? Um, knocking on doors and disrupting this activity. Yeah, we've had four firearms incidents in 24 hours. For me, nothing could be more serious. Uh, if I may, uh, gentlemen. Um, so did I understand that right then, uh, Commissioner, that you do believe the four related, the four incidents from the last 24 hours are related? Well, I think we've got to go on the presumption yeah. that they are certainly in regards to the uh, proximity and time, mm -hmm. location and so on. But we, we start off with a view and of course then that's informed by evidence and information that we collect. So it, it's an ongoing inquiry and where we are today may not be where we are tomorrow. Uh, without getting into too many specifics, uh, specifics obviously, does the forensic evidence that's been collected from those four scenes suggest that the, that the same firearm or firearms... I think, I think that's a question that's been covered. Okay. Okay. It's not what we would reveal. For a number of reasons. Um, and just to clarify, you uh, please don't believe these four incidents are related to the two firearms incidents from uh, North Hamilton in earlier this month, is that correct? I think it's probably too early to say anything on that, but the way in which we're investigating it is all views are open, uh, and obviously our intelligence will look at what the connectivity is, and obviously the information from the public. Um, we had heard a preliminary report this morning about uh, uh, perhaps a firearms incident in the Astor Park area. Is there anything you've heard about that or any information you have on that? I believe you may be referring to the police response that was um, launched in the wake of these shootings last night. The okay. officers actively searching in that area. Um, uh, we had a number of firearms officers in that vicinity, so that's maybe what you're, what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Okay. CNN understands that the bike, that these riders, the rider came in from the uh, war incident last night. Uh, they abandoned their bike and your officers were on foot trying to capture them in that, in that area. We were conducting searches in that area, but I won't, I won't comment on what we recovered from the scene. You know, a, a bike was taken last night from, so I won't, I won't comment on that. Cheers. All right. <coughs> If there are any, if there aren't any further questions, again, what we need to do, we want you members of the public to work with the Bermuda Police Service to make Bermuda safer, and of course provide any information as you heard the Commissioner request with regard to any firearms or ammunition that you might have. Uh, the numbers to call the inspect the investigator in this matter is Detective in Detective Inspector, sorry, Mr. Kenton Trump. You can reach him on seven one seven. Two, three, four, five. As the commissioner alluded to, there is the independent and confidential crime stoppers number 800-8477. Of course, the Bermuda Police Service number 295-0011. Of course, again, we have to request that the community work hand in hand with the police as we continue again to try to make Bermuda safer. Not try to make Bermuda safer.